thanks for joining me. This is Angie at Chicken Scratch. This is the box we're making today. Here are the supplies. This is the Dashing Along Designer Series paper. This is in our one of our promotions for September. I'll explain that in just a second. So this piece measures 10 by four and a quarter. And then I've got some Whisper White and Early Espresso. The stamp set that we're using is Farmhouse Christmas. This image right here. And we're using it with Cherry Cobbler and Early Espresso. Okay, so let me explain the Dashing Along Designer Series paper. If you have a workshop, those are for people that have events in their home. Um, so a workshop or an online order of $250 or more, you get this pack of paper. And I have a sample here of all of the patterns. So we've got um, this pattern, and on the back side would be that one. And then we've got that one, that's the back side, and then this one, and that's the back side. I love this one. I have a couple projects using that one. Okay, if you have any questions, you're welcome to send me an email or give me a call. I'm going to get the Simply Scored Scoring Tool. We're going to place it on the portrait side first, and we're going to score it at one inch on both sides. So I'm going to flip it and score it at one inch. Now I'm going to place it on the landscape side, which is the 10 inch side, and I'm going to score it at 5 eighths, one and a quarter, four and a half, five and a half, eight and three quarters, and nine and three eighths. And I'm having to really look at my instructions because while I'm folding this on the score lines, I will tell you about this box. This is another size of a box that I have made. Um, this is a larger version of a box. So um, this month we are st starting our Stampin' Anonymous tutorials. And uh, this is one of the projects featured in those exclusive tutorials, but a different size. So. Uh, that size has never been shown before in the tutorials. This is another size. Um, so all the details are over on my website. Um, but the quick and dirty is you can get the, tutor the tutorials for free. It's six exclusive projects with placing an order with me this month in September. Or you can purchase the PDF tutorial as well. And all the details are on my site. Okay. So what I've done is I've just folded on all the score lines. Now we're going to do some cutting. I'm going to turn it over on this side because it's a little bit easier to see those score lines. So I'm going to cut. And even on this side, sometimes with all the lights that I have, it's a little it's a little difficult to see. Okay. So we're removing that entire section and then we're going to go down to the other end and do the exact same thing. And I'm just going to fold that again so that I can see it. This is a beautiful pack of paper. Okay. okay, now down here in the center, we want to cut up to the score line on both of these. And then we're going to give this uh, tab a little trim. So I'm just going to trim it a little on the right and a little on the left. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now, if you need this box to, to hold something a little heavier than candy, because I do have um, Kit Kats and Hershey bars that will fit in there, and I'll show you that in a minute. If you want something a little heavier, you're going to need to make it with cardstock and then do the co um, cover it with designer series paper, okay? I'm going to take the detailed trio punch and I'm going to round these top pieces. You can use any corner punch you have. This is the one that we currently sell. One more. 
Okay. The instructions or the inspiration sheet will have the diagram on there, but this is what the, um, the box looks like unassembled, okay? So let me bring this back up, and all we're gonna do is put adhesive on the two sides, just like that. And I'm sorry, you guys can probably hear Skittles. I am bird setting this weekend. This is a uh, Labor Day weekend and some of my family went to the lake. I stayed behind so that I could get some work done with Chase's wedding in two weeks. Um, I need to get a bunch of work done. <laughs> okay. And I'm not complaining. I've certainly had plenty of vacation this summer, so. I can go later. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up. And then since I'm using the tear and tape, I just want to make sure that I don't attach that other side too soon because once that stuff sticks, it sticks. Or it's stuck, I should say. <laughs> okay. Now let me show you the, how the candy fits. So you can see you can fit two pieces easily. I'm not sure about more than that, but I know even like the little snack size candies, they'll fit in there as well, okay? So if you wanted to make this in a Halloween version. Now what we're gonna do is bring the top up together just like that. And which side do I like best? Well, this side's, this side's good. So I'm gonna take my 1 8 circle punch. We do have a Stampin' Up! one, but I just, I have, I have my Walmart one here on my desk. <laughs> I've had it for umpteen years. My other one's on my Stampin' desk where I create. Okay, so this is our Whisper White Cotton Ribbon. And I'm gonna use the Festive Farmhouse Twine, I believe that's what it's called. All the item numbers will be on the inspiration sheet on my website. That is a question I wanted to ask you guys. I have for years put the item numbers on the video, but then I also put them on the inspiration sheet and I also put them on my website. So my question for you guys is, is is those is that three times that I list them necessary or is the inspiration sheet sufficient for you guys and my blog I'll always post it on my blog as well um, but my question is is do you still want me to keep adding it to uh, my YouTube videos right now I've kind of stopped just because with the wedding I have more on my to-do list than can get done so it's just one thing that I've I've cut out for a little bit. I think I said on my video the other day, I'd rather uh, take action imperfectly than wait around and not do anything to make it perfect. So the projects are super cute and the item numbers are on my website. Okay, that part's done. So now let's do some stamping. Sorry, I'm very wordy tonight. Uh, we're going to start with Cherry Cobbler ink. I'm going to open up the ink pad. We're going to stamp this image twice. So once in Cherry Cobbler. And then we're going to close up the Cherry Cobbler. And then I want to clean it with my Simple Chamois. So I'm just going to take this. Make sure I've got it nice and clean. I did just clean my um, my chamois. <laughs> I've used it a lot this weekend. And now we're going to take the Early Espresso. <laughs> we call that the Skittle Squawk. He hear, she hears me talking down here. Okay, so we're going to take the 2-inch Circle Punch and cut out, let's see, which one are we doing? Let me bring this back over here so I can remember. So I'm gonna cut out the Early Espresso with the two inch circle punch. And I'm just centering that. And then we're gonna take the Tailored Tag Punch, come back here, and cut out the Merry Christmas. 
Okay, Skittles, I hear you. Okay. Okay, so here's the Santa's Workshop Enamel Shapes. I had to cut them up for them to fit in our wood mount stamp cases. So they come in real red and I believe garden green. Don't quote me on the green, I'm not positive. And what I did was I took my Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Blend marker and I colored over the red. And what you wanna do is just give it a little while to dry. So I went ahead and colored that one in advance. Uh, so that I could have it dry to use. But I will show you, this is how I did it. I took this tip of the marker, Stampin' Blend marker, and so what I did was I let this dry, and then I came back in and I colored it two more times. And I think it's important that you let it dry before you keep adding. So eventually you're gonna get it to this richer color here, okay? So I'm just gonna take my paper piercer and lift it up and then I'm going to place it exactly where I want it on here and I think it's dry if it's not dry it's going to lift back up on my finger and then I could accidentally get it on my project but I'm pretty sure it's dry yeah it is so just make sure if you're going to color them give them give them a little bit to dry okay so now I'm going to turn it over and put a couple Stampin' Dimensionals on it and I'm going to place it right over this Merry Christmas. And I want to make sure that I get it placed exactly right so that I don't cover up any of those other words. Wishing you a season full of peace and love. Okay, so I'm going to make a slight change. Um, on this one, I used the Layering Circles Framelits to cut out this scallop circle. But if you didn't have the Big Shot and you don't have the Framelits, you could use the Starburst Punch. So right in the middle of this video, I've just made a change really quickly because I thought, well, you know what? It would be nice to show two different options. So I'm going to again take my dimensionals and add it on there. I'm gonna get my box back over here now, and I'm gonna add this Starburst right into the middle of my box, just using regular adhesive. Okay, head over to my website, leave a comment to enter to win. I have another Santa sack with a chick stand to give away. And someone asked the other day, when do I do the drawing? I usually wait about a week. So, um, yeah. Okay, so here's my original using the scallop circle framelits. What is it called? Layering circles framelits. And then this one's using the starburst. I do prefer the layering circles because it is a little bit thicker and it shows up more where this one's a little thinner and you can't see as much of it. But they're both super cute, right? Okay, have a great day. If you need anything, let me know. Bye.